Hi everyone. So this is the show called Helpful of a Mind. So in this show, you're going to meet four experts who are very good at what they do, ranging from social secu- uh, social engineering and cybersecurity nerds to data scientists to uh, over excited researchers and uh, our resident very solemn, very very calm. Um, well, very calm philosophers. So let's start with our data scientist. Um, let me tell you a little, a little about her. She is uh, very hard to please. I have almost never seen her happy. She's very pedantic. And I've almost never seen her excited unless there was a lot of data and it was clean data. Well, let's introduce you to our lead data scientist. Um, hi there. Hi. Uh, thanks for introducing me. I do have a problem with the word lead you used. It almost adds no information. Instead, it is a very confusing term. You could have said something like an expert, which is a more commonly used term, or you could have said only data scientist, which I would have very much preferred. Missing data is not as dangerous as dirty data because you can generate faulty results that will hurt your integrity in the long run. I also have to appear serious and sophisticated because no one wants a hippie doing a mathematical job that requires high precision. So there you have it, but be careful with the terms you use. We don't so So yeah, told you hard to please. Uh, but moving on, let's talk to our next candidate who thinks she is a social engineer, although I've never seen her in action. And she is also a cybersecurity nerd. Come to think of it, I don't know that much about her. She is very, very mysterious. Um, hello there. Hello. You reveal way too much information. I can already tell. In week five, you seem high in extroversion, low in neuroticism, and somewhat good in conscientiousness. You also seem very agreeable. I can tell you are somewhat open. So in in my breaks, you seem pretty extroverted. I will rate you as either an ESFP or an ESTP. In DISC, you seem like an active and people-focused person, so that would make you influential. I am also connected to your Wi-Fi network, which has weak security and on my Wireshark, I can see that there's a malicious actor probably who is sending large packets of data to and fro from your machine. I would tell you to be cautious both in person and with your devices. Paranoid much? But, yeah. Hey. Did I just lose ten dollars? Who's paranoid now? <laughs> you're still paranoid and you're a jerk. So yeah. So let's move on to our next candidate, who is a very excited dabbler into different fields, into different disciplines. She has a lot of ideas from she wants to create imagination machines, she wants to have libraries for everyone in the world, she wants to eliminate big world problems, she thinks she can do a lot, and she has big ideas. So let's see what she's at. Hi there! <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't call myself overexcited, but here's something that you don't know. Currently, the imagination that we have or creativity that we have is very confined. Like you have a set of knowledge base and then you use that to create new things, but it's still a deductive version of reasoning, okay? Now imagine an extra extrapolative machine that is like just so imaginative, it has no constraints. Imagine it being able to access human knowledge that does not exist. Imagine like every time you've put, you've been put to a stop, okay? What if there was a way to say, this is not the stop? Any, any information that you could not think of, that your mind or countless other minds or all of humanity could create, could be created. So tell me, am I overexcited or are you underexcited? Well, uh, yeah, well, calm down. Yeah. Let's meet our fourth and final candidate. 
uh, the interesting part about uh, her is whenever you need her, she's there. She thinks she has a philosophy about almost everything. She can make a very, very sad situation very optimistic, and she can somehow make a very optimistic situation very sad. Hi there. Hi. Um. <laughs> Thanks for introducing me. I'm not particularly a philosopher, but I do believe that we live in a philosophy. I'm not a cynic or a stoic as most people assume. It's just that most theories out there about human mind, or psychology, or the reality of the universe somehow coincide at this point of exists in the mind or outside the mind. It is just that I would, I would go as far as to say that reality that we see is only a version of it from each of our own minds. We project into it. The problems we feel are big suddenly become big. The problems that we feel are small suddenly become just circles. And sometimes, in the worst of times, all you need is to switch the channel. And we are all in this together in a very weird kind of way which took me a lot of years to understand quite frankly and um yeah do meditate it's a good practice for the mind so coming back to earth no oh, so let's get down to what these experts are going to do in this channel we are going to have videos by each of these experts delving deep down into their fields and pulling some really really core knowledge making how-to videos from life philosophies to something that's very useful. They might collaborate occasionally, but in their own fields, they are very well versed. Now, a pedantic philosopher may be odd, and a philosophical data scientist is not the best way to go, but in their own fields, they are very good. So keep tuned for more. Uh, subscribe to this channel and like this video and you'll get to see a lot more of them and you'll love everything you see. So I'm your host, the main the, the main anchor person of the mental hellhole and I, on my discretion, the rest of them work. Although they would not admit I have to keep a low profile, they're very arrogant. Uh, so see you every week, Monday and Thursday. Keep tuned and have a good day.